Welcome, welcome, and happy Friday, Pat. We made it another week. Yeah, we did. We're here. Yeah, well, you know, we keep much going much, along. Much to the chagrin of some people out there. So, we how to do? Um, we, uh, like I said yesterday, we are here to um, offend the few and enlighten the many. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I wanted to talk about. Um, is it possible that we could see an inventory shortage again? Um, and then, uh, but the water got a little muddy today. So, um, you know, we started out with this incredible news. Silicon Valley Bank is shut down by regulators and the biggest financial bank failure since the global financial crisis. It kind of changes everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. a little bit. And it showed up in the markets today, and now there's talk, well, how how much contagion is there, blah, blah, blah. And they're saying 20 banks that are sitting on huge potential security losses, they're all getting the squeeze. And this is all because rates went up, their margins got squeezed, and uh, and it's not good news for startups. That, that, SV, that bank had 44% uh, of their um, deposits were startup companies but here's the 20 banks that this article is highlighting that might be a might be a problem um i looked at our seven day moving average and uh yeah and keen is it what a dip in rates welcome site these uh big swings swings need to chill i think the big swings are just beginning um we went down a little bit in contracts uh but we also pulled down in um in new listings and uh so the gap actually closed a little bit we got there was about a 500 home difference now it's you know 360 um so you know that's that's just simple supply and demand there and uh and stephanie here says uh why is it some realtors want you to list your house for sale when, when you have yet to formally be approved after underwriting seems ludicrous and a waste of time um you're saying, let's see, let me see. I understand this. List your house for sale when you have yet to be formally approved after underwriting. Um, I'm assuming that's a contingent sale. Yeah. I mean, there's some, I mean, I'm assuming uh, there's some things in there that um, need to be filled in, but there's some banks that, you know, they're, they basically allow you to bridge loan. You can use your equity. You can list your home. You, know, you can basically, they do a loan program where they can, um, Take the equity from your current home and apply it to your new home. It's called a basic bridge loan. It's a program. You know, a couple of lenders have that. Yeah. Um, I was looking here. Um, and we'll touch on that a little second here, too. This is the Cromford Demand Index. And you can see that. You always got I, these little tools. Well, you know what? My red pen quit working. <laughs> I went back to the magnifying glass. Oh, but boy. Okay. I was expecting that blue line to kind of come up a little bit on listings, right? And it didn't. Mm -hmm. I was expecting sales to slow down a little bit. And it hasn't. Now, I think this chart has like a one week lag. Um, but again, we're, we're starting to build that gap and we're starting to lose more inventory. And, you'll, you know, if you've watched the show a while back, um, you know, I used to track a neighborhood called Ocotillo. And remember when at one point they got down to where they only had six homes on the market? Was there, was there like three or four? I think one day you called me and said there were like three homes or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. Well, now it's like 19, so it's still painstakingly low, and the contract ratios are going up. And so there's a lot of stuff out there that is – now you're looking at this edginess in the market, and I'm going to pull up your chart here in a second. Um, and if rates – come down or the fed decides they have to pause because of this banking situation and trying to stop any contagion we could end up with a shortage of homes once yet again and uh, not something i want to see no 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 definitely not so is this my intro you're up <laughs> all right yeah i mean it's it was a good day in the market. I got to get mean, some drums or something. So yeah, you need some music to you know I mean to come out with some like Rick 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 Ricky Fair or something like that. You know. Oh, yeah. uh, but um, no, the bond market had a great day. Obviously, the last two days. I mean, we you see this is this is actually rates. You know, we saw they tipped up 
um, here a couple days ago. And then we, this is where Barry has been very influential. And I've been watching him and he didn't put a lock out. Um, he put a lock. I mean, he said, let's just wait and wait tight. You remember I told you a couple months ago, March 10th and March 14th. Yep. Yep. I mean, yep, he called here it. We are. Yeah, here we are. And um, basically he, um, this is rates. So we broke through some resistance here, the 50 day, you know, 25, um, we had basically it was the market itself. This five and a half coupon was up like 70 some basis points. To, when it got going, it was up. It started the day about up 21 basis points, but they gained momentum through the day, obviously with the Silicon Valley bank news. But um, the five and a half was up 35, four basis points. The 10 year treasury got is down to 370. We were tipping at 399 here. Um, obviously just a couple of days ago, you know, so, I mean, it just shows you those swings, 21 basis points <clears throat> is a big day on the market. Um, and he basically just said, um, that, uh, we, we really are, um, seeing the cracks, uh, in the labor market. And we're seeing obviously some cracks, you know, he feels that the stage is set. Um, he said the job, the job creations of 311,000, obviously the estimations were 225,000. But obviously, you wonder what news was built into the Silicon Valley. What you know, the market was had some, you know, some news that was kind of trying to digest. And um, you know, he said there's just cracks uh, starting to see. You know, food benefits, food stamp benefits are ending. Um, you know, he said there's other cracks. I don't want to get into. He went into some detail over his uh, you know video call this morning. But he goes, you know, people are not finding jobs as quickly as they are. You know, there's acute change. Um, the data doesn't really show this because basically, you know, the feds are going off of once again, their inexperience. Is he said their inexperience is starting to show. And um, he, he says how much is left in the tank with these job gains, because we're basically back to pre pre pandemic levels and um, are getting there. So, um, you know, you got an inverted yield curve right now. And he says, um, all this basically, all this hiking has inverted these curves. 100 is 120 basis point difference in the short term to long term, and um, he goes, the banks are paying. This is where you probably see into the banks. He goes, the banks now are paying, you know, short term with short term rates higher. They don't have the advantage. Their margins are getting squeezed. Yeah, I went to bank the other day to deposit a check, and I, I usually do it on the machine, but I I went up and handed the check to the teller, and and she right away goes. Um, we raised our rates today for our CDs. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah, here we go. Here we go. Um, Silicon, they, they could not find a buyer, Michael. They they tried to find a buyer. They tried to see if the feds would uh, bail them out. And uh, um, no mas. Nobody wanted to play in their sandbox. Uh, yeah, there, no, there's a buyer at every price. Some price there will be a buyer. Yeah, yeah. we will see. Uh, Pat, when is your YouTube channel coming out? <laughs> I, I'm writing on Rick's coattails. I, uh, <laughs> Funny story for everybody. I uh, did a tutorial on how to yeah. run this StreamYard program that I use, and I sent it to Jack and the uh, Dynamic Duo and said, you know, in case, I, in case I get hit by a truck, you guys got to know how to work this thing. And uh, We didn't open up the email. <laughs> none of you have watched it. So I, I'm going to score you know publicly. So I know you got you can't you know you can't. Uh, I know in your in your in your will in your will and last testament you're going to have to have the directions of what the hell to do. It's on the season. first page. Okay, okay. Well, I'll check yeah. it out. Oh, but Rick, you know, oh, Pat, wait. oh Pat, you have to take over the show. So yeah. Uh, so Stephanie, Pat is right. Today's NBS rate is six point seven for six versus earlier seven point two. You know, it goes to show you how quickly things can change. Yeah, <laughs> but it also, you know, when rates were going up, it's doom and gloom. Here we go. Oh, they're going to continue to go up. And in one day, you know, now you're going to start hearing people go, oh, it's not going to be long. We're going to be into fives. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that may not happen. Uh, no. The talk of the the central bank going up a half a percentage point at their next meeting. I bet that just goes away. Yeah, that that Barry, Barry and Dan Habib said that 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 probably has washed out the window because that. If they jump at a half, um, you know, it's going to really, you know, they're just, I think they're going to keep the speed going at 100 miles an hour a, a quarter. Well, isn't know? that going to put the banks in a worse situation if he were to do that's something a, like that? That's, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, he's that's said what they're trying they're, to balance here. 
yeah, Barry said basically that, uh, you know, um, you know, the banks are, it's a bad situation for banking. Cause like he said, based on their inexperience, they want, the feds want to keep hiking, but you know, the, you, then you're talking about the spreads and the banks and their money that they're getting and giving out. You know, there's a lot of stuff. And like I said, we could be on, you know, we got to keep our YouTube channel to 20, 25 minutes or so. Cause we could go talk about this stuff for next, you know, three days. But that's why I try to, I, I know more than what I tell them, but I just don't want to get into too much detail. Cause it just blow, you know, it, it, it starts, you lose it. Uh, forest through the trees but you know he barry used a very interesting analogy today he goes it's like a patient that walked in the hospital that was sick the nurse gave him a small dose of a medicine right and the nurse turned around you know a couple hours wasn't responding and like hmm okay um we gotta give him another dose Mm, still not responding oh we gotta give him another dose before you know it you've given him five doses of stuff and all of a sudden Something's going on. And that's what he's kind of using with that analogy with the feds. It's like they're doing small doses, but then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we just gave them too much morphine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the only answer you can give you after a while, the market just kind of goes, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> so what? there's, there, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, but, you know, give me an example. I mean, you know, People, I know I was quoting I-6's low 7, 7 and 8, believe it or not. And I can't imagine what a retail bank was quoting, um, obviously, because like I said me and my uh, partner, Richard, were saying that, um, you know, some of these retail banks were quoting probably eight, you know, because we were tipping, you know, seven and three eighths, you know, seven and quarters, you know, right around there. And in a matter of a couple of days, I just locked a guy today at six and a half. Yeah. That was a difference of about, two, you know, I'm just, I can't remember the exact number. It was like, I ran up the night, I calculated the numbers. I said, Hey, we, we did this. And I go, it was something like a 200, two and a quarter, $225 monthly difference. Well, I agree. Uh, Bravo more here says, uh, um, cutting the rate buyers might show up. Well, we're at 3,300 now on a seven day moving average. So we'll see what happens and, uh, and see what happens this weekend. I mean, that, that kind of news can get people in the car real quick. Oh yeah. Especially if they think it's a temporary move. Mm-hmm. So there's people on the phone right now going, let's, let's get out there. Now we might want to lock. Let's yeah. see. But the problem is, or Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, it still doesn't change the inventory problem. I mean, you got, you could have a, uh, no, another no. 10,000 buyers out there, but the inventory still is not moving. Yeah. And, uh, Terry says real estate mindset said Phoenix is going down first. Said he went to Cooper Canyon, Copper Canyon and desert oasis. The first development, the crash hand waving people crying. Well, here's here's something from the Crawford report talking about that a little bit. I'll, I'll have to read this to you because it's too small. But said um, the reason I have said the majority of people seem to assume that the rise in mortgage rates over the past five weeks will have caused home buyers to reconsider and delay their purchases. While there may be some, or even many, who have done just that, reports from new home sales offices suggest that orders have stayed remarkably strong. Sales Mm -hmm. incentives are not being raised, and I fear that the result will be another shortage of homes within a few months because they are not adding to the inventory. Their permits are way down. They're saying that uh, um, January's permit count for single-family dwellings in Maricopa was 1,102, following a more dismal count of 997 in December. These are down from the 3,000 level during the second half of 2020. In 2021, the first half of 2022. So the new permits are way down. So if there's anything that kind of starts popping up and we don't see, you know, builders are only building now the homes that they can, you know, they're, they only want to, they want to sell them like spec homes because nobody's going to, in this interest rate environment, say, I want that house. Oh, it won't be done till September. Okay. Because yeah. we don't know where rates are going to be in September. So, yeah. so they're not, that kind of product is, is not moving. Um, most of the comps in your area are pending. There's about five under contract. It's, uh, I hate to use the word brisk out there, but it feels brisk again because we don't have, I mean, look, we got 14,600 homes on a Friday. That's the highest number for the week now. So that'll go down until uh, it'll get it, get its lowest level on Tuesday. It'll start eking back up as we get towards the weekend. So mm-hmm. it's, that's why I said, is there going to be another, shortage because i think we we don't need that um no, and i think no. the fed 
is in a very precarious position that uh, they, you know, they're trying to pull down inflation and the banks can't handle this margin squeeze. And it's uh, it's a tangled web. But don't worry, Pat, because Janet Yellen says she thinks we're fine. Yeah. Yeah. He's well, the you one know, who said inflation was going to be transitory too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you know that's where Barry Habib has just been blasting these guys. I mean, he's like the Fed experience, you know, just starting to you know showing, which is kind of scary. I mean, you look at. I mean, I'm not to get political, but or I'm not trying to be, but I'm just trying to look to state the facts. You you watch us yell and talk. You know, uh, what, what's her first name again? Um, Janet. Janet. Yeah, Janet. I was just say Margaret for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but. Um, you know, she just doesn't bode a level of confidence that they know what the hell they're doing. I know well, she, but she was that. the Fed. She was the Fed chairman before she was treasury. Right. And they uh, just they just I mean, you know, Paul, I mean, he's in a precarious position. But, you know, I, just a, a side note, I had a client of mine, you know, people that were locking at, you know, say, you know, seven, seven and eighth. You know, um, I've had a couple of people throw out to me saying, well, you know, if rates do come down, because, I, you know, there's no guarantee people I never guarantee people can refinance that rates are going to come down because, you know, Nine out of 10 mortgage brokers say, oh, yeah, don't worry. We can refinance in the future. You might not be able to. You don't know. Right. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, that's a yeah. step. That's just, I mean, I tell people, yes, yeah, possibly, but it's not a 100% guarantee. You know, because I, I hate that statement that people say, don't worry. You know, we get this rate and you'll be able to refinance down the road. Hmm? You, know, you might be able to. Yeah, you might I, be. Able. I like I, mean, I like certainty and broad. I like the, I, you know, I think there's a good chance. Obviously, Barry is saying rates are going to come down, but I had somebody, you know, a couple of people say, well, you know, these people are, you know, um, I didn't lock. I, I I waited. I watched Barry. I mean, I did not. The locking I did was uh, last night and today. I mean, basically, I it was painful to watch rates go up because I got a couple of contracts a week and a half a week ago, and I tried <laughs> to, you know, as you know. I take pride in the fact of watching rates better than the average mortgage guy. And, you know, I, you know, if you call a big call center, you know, on January 1st, 30 day of close, regardless of whether rates have gone up for the last month, they're just going to lock you for 30 days. But like, I'm like, dude, let's just sit back. Rates have gone up the last week and a half. We're going to see a pullback. Once again, you know, you've taught, we've had some situations where I've saved money, you know, not, it's not all the time, but people are, you got to be smart about it. And it's just, it's one of those things that, you know, um, watching the rates, I had people those come out and say, well, at 7%, you know, yeah, rates do, if they rates do come down, um, home values are going to fall down, you know, and I won't be able to refinance. I go quite the contrary that if, if you lock in at say 7%, let's say a higher rate, if rates do come down, are you, you and I both know you're going to see more demand, which is going to keep the, yeah. yeah. And it's, and that rates are not going to have to come down too much to see more demand is because no. I think that you know, in the market right now, people are getting used to this ping pong going mm -hmm. back and forth. And it's, uh, you know, it's like um, there's, there was an old show out there. My parents used to watch called singing along with Mitch, follow the bouncing ball. And uh, it bounced over. You know, the I don't want to date myself, but I think I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was God off. That's, that's when you went downstairs with your brother and played ping pong. Um, yeah. So, uh, Bravo, man, um, I want to, you know, you're saying you're concerned about rates dropping too much uh, and dropping. The closer we get to five, the more brisk the market's going to get. Yeah, I don't want to see any heating up. No. I, I'd like to stay at six for a while. Yeah. Personally, yeah. it's a calmer market. Uh, people are able to negotiate. Prices are not going to come flying up. They're going to stay level. They might even come down. I'd like to see us stay there, six, six and a half. Well, you um, know what? Let me, let me down to five and the bidding wars. Start showing up again, and and uh, um, can I? Inter I had a train. I had a, I had a train thought go through my is head. It there? Can, is I it, uh, can I? Can I stop? Yeah, yeah. Can... Before it leaves the station, please. No, I, no, I actually just did. I oh Jesus. Um, keep going. <laughs> oh, <the> boy. <laughs> you gotta interrupt you sometimes because I got. It that. happened in real time. <laughs> Damn, Jesus. <laughs> It'll come back. I'll It'll come back. For it. Jackie says I'm worried we have a problem either way. It goes at my last comment. Yeah, it's. It, you know, they tighten too much. And, uh, uh, Kenan, you can see, yeah, we're well, here. Much. I don't hear real quickly. Wait, hold. I, I've never, I've never been, I've been doing this 23 years. I've never seen a market. This go this, this kind of shows, goes to show you how tight the market is overall, you know, buyer, buyer demand, you know, buyer and sellers. 
I have just never been in a market with being a, doing mortgages where where rates on a weekly, daily, weekly, and monthly basis affect demand. I've never seen that before, honestly. Well, usually doesn't about, move this fast. I just never thought about that. I'm like, I'm like, because like you said, I just quoted a guy the other day, and his his payment changed by like two hundred and some dollars a month. <laughs> it's like it just go, that just goes to show you the tightness in this market for some reason. It's not there's just this. It expands quick, t- contracts, cause, and it's just, it's, it, I think people have to be going back to buying and selling. You know, you, you get, I think people get so caught up in all this stuff that they, um, you have to just like, you know, like Jackie has said too, you know, a couple of days ago, our renowned analyst and uh, Jackie, she said, you know, regardless, everything's on a case by case basis. And you just, there's so much noise going on out there, rates and banks and this and that, you know, just, you gotta, and we're and obviously I think you and I make a goal of just trying to take the no- noise out of it and just try to give people the facts and not have a motive, you know, agenda, but just say, here, here's what it is. And I think people have to base their situation on um, what do I need to do for my family? Well, and, and, you know, and, and the, the scary stuff out there. And if you're a person that likes to plan, you need to pay attention to this. Oh yeah. Um, NASA yeah. discovers an asteroid has a slight chance of hitting the Earth on Valentine's Day 2046. So let's okay. see how, how old will I be? Um, I I won't be here. Yeah. <laughs> you probably will be, Pat. But I uh, now, if you were yeah. still doing the YouTube channel, then I tell you what, kudos <laughs> to us, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really <laughs> oh, shit. in a wheelchair. I'll be on oxygen. I'm like. <laughs> Uh, inventory, <laughs> and you're going to be on the other side going, What? 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 I can't hear you. Yeah. Oh. Now, um, yeah, I can never hear you. Um, so, yeah, it's Thursday. You're thirsty? Yeah, let's go have a beer. Um, yeah. Now, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> let, let everybody know. I wonder if rates will go back up. You know, Jackie, I, um, here, here's another dollar. Um, I don't, oh, when the closer the asteroids get, uh, this dollar will only be worth like a, a, a less than a penny at that at that stage. So um, I'll go ahead and make the bet with you, Jackie, and then uh, you and Pat can do it. So, but Pat, tomorrow's your big day, and uh, St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day parade for Phoenix. St. Patrick's yeah. Day parade. I could not find your picture when I Googled it, but I found um, somebody that was the master of that. That's that my dad. Day. Yep. And uh, now the other thing I discovered, it's kind of like Santa Claus. There isn't just one. There's a lot of you out there. Yeah. Well, I'm, there's only one. I've never, I've never walked to, I, I, for St. Patrick's Day, I, I dress up and I walk, go to some bars, but there, I've never seen a guy dressed, guys dressed up like my uncle and my dad did this for the last 40 years. I, my dad, the one you're showing there, he passed away in October of 2021, but uh, I took it over for them. But uh, God bless his soul. But, uh, I have a blast with yeah, the parades th- th- tomorrow, and then I do St. Patty's Day on Friday, so it should be fun. But so, no, I thought that was a great shot. I found that today and said, uh, you know, let's put Dad up there. Yeah, that's what I look like. That's my uniform. I'll now send the you bars pictures. Clothes, the one on. I'll send uh, you pictures of post. Camel. But anyway, yeah, do that. Mm-hmm. Well, look, it just lined up to be a very interesting week, and I apologize for my coughing. Folks, but, take on the weekend. We'll follow this up on Monday. Yeah, we'll get to, we got about Tuesday. We got the CPI or next week, so we got interesting week follow through. So, all right, buddy. Talk to you soon, guys. Yeah, bye. See ya.